So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be talking about male rappers being mad at female rappers and the irony that comes with this. I've been seeing a lot of men in music make a lot of comments about what female rappers are doing. And I'm just gonna start by saying, I think the ladies have a lot of these men a little shook. Maybe because the men are seeing the current female rappers, maybe because they think that women will somehow supersede male rap, but definitely because they're seeing the reality of the imagery that they have created through this genre. Hip hop is very expressive and it's very raw. And that's one thing I think a lot of people are drawn to within hip hop, even if they're not black. I feel like the reason that hip hop has become so popular is because of course the beats, the dances, and the distinct style of the rappers who represent hip hop, but also because of its subject matter being very explicit, very straightforward, and very, very raw. And because of the subject matter representing that, this also trickles into the physical side of rap. The male rappers are mainly known for having bust down rollies and diamond teeth, golds in their mouth, big chains. They used to have more of a baggy fashion style. Now it's more form fitting designer wear, as much designer wear as you can wear. The flashy cars, obviously the expensive watches. And I would actually argue to say that having locks or a twisted natural hairstyle is kind of staple for male rappers at the moment. And then for female rappers, it's all about sex appeal. And we know this, how little you can wear, go get your body done, get implants, get some type of butt enhancement. You better be able to shake your butt. They have the big chain, a lot of designer clothing, and that wig better be a bust down and longer than giraffe legs. So that's the aesthetic. But I find it interesting that all of a sudden we have more male rappers commenting on the shift of female rap music, even though it's the male rappers that have created this imagery within women within this genre. Now, this video isn't about blaming one side or another. It's simply just being honest about how we've gotten to the current state of women in hip hop. I think it's really important to just kind of chronicle how we've gotten here. So I've broken this video down into one overall main talking point. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So my one and overall main talking point is men created the culture for female rap hands down. Hip hop goes way back, but I'm really speaking about modern hip hop. So let's just say anything between the 2000s, mid 2000s up until now. Of course, you can't speak about hip hop without mentioning the 90s, but I feel like what is happening in modern hip hop and how it's gotten to this point really started to exponentially grow in the early and mid 2000s. From the first rap song I've ever heard, men have been objectifying women in so many ways. Whether it's through sex, through fashion, through labels, women have been objectified by men in rap for so long. And I think as a society, we are so used to it in this industry that we don't really point fingers at male rappers when they say things or they're praised for things even years later, such as bees ain't ish, but holes and tricks lick on these nuts and suck the tip. Y'all know the real lyrics, but I'm trying to keep it as PG as possible. But when lyrics like that have been stapled in hip hop for well over two decades, we have to look at male rappers or just men in hip hop as the culprit of how we've gotten to this culture. I feel like male rappers have definitely been a staple in hip hop regardless of how they've done it. And I do think it's fair to say that there is a certain way that this has come about. We have gotten some of the greatest rappers through this method of expressing themselves. And my degree is in the art, so I'm really open to all of the ways people like to express their art. I can see it objectively and I can see it subjectively. So one way that I've been really exploring the genre a little deeper is through listening to podcasts like DJ Drama's Gangsta Grills podcast. Thank you to today's sponsor, which is Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries, and more. So in honor and celebration of the 50th anniversary of hip hop, Audible has released an extensive slate of content featuring iconic hip hop talent. So for me, I've been listening to the podcast interviews with rap legends such as Lil Wayne, Pharrell, and T.I. And honestly, listening to podcasts on Audible is perfect for me because I'm always busy and on the go. I like to just pop my AirPods in and enjoy listening to interesting content, just like y'all like to listen to me. From the artists all the way to the producers, engineers, and DJs, hip hop in my opinion, is the top contender in music then and now. And as an aspiring rapper, you have got to do your due diligence on the staples that come before me. I really liked the Lil Wayne episode, not only because I liked how DJ Drama asked the questions and he was personable, but Lil Wayne's influence in bringing in rappers like Drake and Nicki Minaj was just so inspiring. So DJ Drama's Gangsta Girls podcast episodes were perfect for me from a learning point of view, but also the guest list was cool too. Hey, maybe I'll get an interview one day. As a commentator, I love dialogue, storytelling, journalism, all of that. So I really like how Audible has audiobooks, series, and podcasts 
so many ways for me to find something I like. I am honored to partner with Audible because I've been using Audible for years to listen to many of my favorite series, so it is full circle. So you can listen to D-Day Drama's Gangsta Girls podcast on Audible and join now for 30 days of free listening. You can use the link, which is audible.com slash grills or text grills to 500-500. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. So in reference to this observation of gender differences in hip hop, I always hold women accountable, but let's be real about the derivative of what is happening now. It stems from these male rappers and male rappers perpetuate this. They don't hold each other accountable. So it's very interesting to see how now some of them have spoken either against the current state of female rap music or at the very least just making comments about it in general. So a few weeks back, Fabulous was a rapper out of New York and Fabulous has been rapping since the 90s. He had most of his prominence in like the early and mid 2000s. So he is a well-known figure in the genre but he made some comments in regards to female rap and I found them to be interesting so he said I love hearing female rappers talking some real ish women are so strong have so many stories and perspectives that we need to hear in pure form no disrespect to any female rappers out but I think there's only one style of female rap slash hip-hop being promoted programmed and looked at as successful now now this is a thousand percent facts I'll even say this is ten thousand percent facts I'm not against what he said because it is a true statement I've been saying this for so long and now the narrative is shifting and people are tired of seeing female rappers in this way but I've been saying this for years but whatever I'm a hater I'm a pick me so with this I think it's only fair to acknowledge how this can even happen though because who owns these labels who's the main gender managing these artists who's the main image of people promoting how huge these female rappers are and why they're so successful the answer is men I spoke about how a lot of the female rappers who come in with like a little more of a tomboy style or something a little bit more laid back eventually kind of go the more sexier route and I feel like it's because the men are pushing what other men want to see in this industry. Now, the ownership of labels are probably all white men. So that is the derivative of this. However, are we going to blame these white men by themselves? we can't. Their daughters are not out here doing the type of stuff that is being expressed in this music. And if they are, they're not representing it. But their daughters listen to the music. Their daughters probably like the male rappers. Their daughters probably are fans of the female rappers. But they have a cushion and honestly enough cultural structure to know that they're not going to let this be the forefront of what women in their communities represent. But unfortunately, black male rappers, black male executives, black male managers have historically no qualms about black women being promoted in this way. Now within rap, it's not just black women who are the female rappers in rap. A lot of these mainstream women are actually biracial as well, but a lot of them being biracial do have black male fathers such as Lotto and Ice Spice and even Doja Cat. And I'm not saying that their fathers are all perpetrators of this. It's a possibility. But what I am saying is that when black men have made it seem cool, acceptable, and common practice for women within their communities to be degraded and only promoted in sexual lights, only promoted in ways that aren't versatile to what it really means to be a black woman, how can you open your mouth now and say something that you've contributed to? Now, now, I'll be fair, I do think it's within hip hop culture for women to be objectified. And I do think that there are many women that are willing to be objectified. So it's not like these women are being forced against their will to get up on a stage and wear some of the things that they wear or write some of the lyrics that they write. They're not being forced. However, the common practice of this was very much enforced for years before the female rap evolution that we are in. It wasn't until maybe Cardi B that a surplus of female rappers started to come out and be more mainstream than in years past. And I remember giving Cardi B credit in my previous videos for essentially opening the door for more female rappers to be mainstream because her success was really one of those things where I assumed that she went viral and took her opportunity and ran with it. And I think I said this either earlier this year or sometime last year. But with my current day mindset, I have to be real. I feel like what Cardi B did was open the door for more female artists to come in. Yes, but also open the door for more female artists to be mediocre and successful, just being real. Because I remember Jermaine Dupri making a comment about the current state of female rap music saying that it's just strippers rapping. And he got quite a lot of flack for saying this, and I even thought that he was doing too much too. But when I look back now, he was not lying. He was almost foreshadowing what was yet to come. Nowadays, a lot of these girls that rap are mediocre talent that don't have much investment or passion for music, who now have gotten on by doing bare minimum effort, or at least being very heavy heavily assisted into their success. But at the same time, again, male rap has been almost in favor of this if you really look through the lyrics, the visuals, and the types of women that they promote. Even as far as the types of women that a lot of these rappers date or marry, they're not going for the more modest women or women who don't like the spotlight or women who aren't just arm candy. They're going for the same type of women that they rap about who are known for things that are pretty much one-dimensional and don't necessarily reflect women in a diverse way. I think female rap is just lacking versatility. I can't be all the way mad at sexual rappers and 
its entirety because I do enjoy some of that content. I have some raunchy or vulgar lyrics myself in upcoming music. So how hypocritical would I be to say I'm against it in its entirety? What I am against is the fact that there's no variety and that we keep getting the same imagery and it's now influencing other women to come in with the same blueprint, which is convoluting the talent pool for the genre. But I must say, if male rappers wanna see a change or now they're fed up or just have something to say, they also have to change the way that they put their music out. And I know some men will say, well, we rap about what we rap about, but we don't go overboard in the way that females do. But I disagree. As much as female rappers rap about their wet punanis, male rappers rap about the switches on their Glock, which, by the way, you can't put a switch on your Glock. That is very illegal. Switches are like for the army, not for the neighborhood. But anyway, I think male rappers are starting to realize that yes, many female rappers are taking it a little bit too far. Or yes, the pool is saturated with the same type of look. But I feel that there has to be some type of accountability for why that is. Most of these women are not solo in their journeys to mainstream success. It's men that manage. It's men that say, this is the look that we want for you. It's men that are in charge of distributing a lot of this content. Like the only female manager that I've heard of in raps hip hop is Deb Atney, who is the mother of Waka Flocka. And I know she used to either manage Nicki Minaj or has some type of tie into her career, but like that's the only woman that I really remember. And of course, I have to do more research to know who else is there, but a lot of it, it's men and what they want women to be in their image. And they're now putting this out there and putting so much money behind it, yet then we have people complaining. Okay, well, why not put your dollars in some type of other talent then? There was also another old school artist by the name of Hot Boy Turk. I mentioned him in a past video and he made a comment about Glorilla's Lil Kim inspired photos that she took for her birthday this year. He said, why we gotta make our black woman who become successful a mockery? Hashtag telling the truth, not hating. And like I said before, I'm kind of back and forth with this one because as much as I do kind of agree, I feel like male rappers have been sexualizing women before the female rap sexualization era even became so rampant. I think for men in hip hop who want a change, they have to lead because it almost comes off as we can call women names and objectify them, but it's not okay if women have the autonomy to do it to and for themselves. What finesse two times say? It's cool when they do it, it's a problem when I do it. And that's how some of these comments kinda come off. I always talk about how the female MC should really try to switch up what is prominent amongst female rappers these days. I think the general public is over the raunchiness and overtly sexual antics, but I kinda see it as the response to years of that expression being carried out in hip hop kinda boiling over into this. So yeah, I feel like this culture has kind of been created by men and also upheld by men. And I do think women being objectified kind of happens in every industry. So it's not like it's a shocker. I mean, essentially it's like you have the girls who used to be video girls now at the forefront of these videos. They literally graduated from the background to the foreground. So it is a bit hypocritical to comment on the current state of female rap, being that it's an offspring of what has already been perpetuated for decades. If you ask me, both sides are overall responsible. The men created this, promoted it and monetized it and the women ran with it, expanded it, and solidified it. This is the evolution of objectifying women. This is the result and cause and effect. So I hope that now that we are having this conversation on both the male rap and female rap end, we realize that hip hop is a gem that has a luster that shouldn't be dimmed down to what it's become over the last few years. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. As y'all know, I have a new song coming out. So definitely stay tuned for my song, Let's Go. You can use the link down below to pre-save. The video and the song will be released very, very, very soon. Also, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Audible. You can listen to DJ Drama's Gangsta Grills podcast on Audible and join now for 30 days of free listening. You can use the link below, which is audible.com slash grills or text grills to 500-500. Again, thanks Audible for sponsoring this video. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all. Free my mind. Come, baby, don't waste no time. So wish you down for me, because this can really